Today I'll be talking a little more about the score block, but also introducing a new command. In the previous video, I mentioned the importance of keeping your input files organized and structured. There's nothing wrong with keeping all of this in one input file, just organized with sections of code. One major downside to this, however, especially if the score contains many different instruments, is that when you go to create parts, you may actually be creating more work for yourself. A lot more work. What I recommend is to do what many experienced users do with their music. They actually have separate files for their instrument definitions and then link them to their score file. But if we want to do this, we're going to need a way to connect the files, and that's where the include command comes in. Essentially, what the include command does is bridge the files together. It does this by actually including an entire copy of whatever file you tell it to. So in our case, what we would do is we would create our definitions in one file, which would have all the music, articulations, and so on, and then create a second file that would act as our score file. This is how we use the include command. Now keep in mind the include command includes an entire copy of the file where it's being inserted in your score. It's not just a section or a region of that file, it includes all the data from that file from top to bottom. After the include link is up and running, we can then manipulate our score and make any changes that we may need in order to polish things up. By using the include command, we're able to move our definitions from the top section of our input file, where they've been for much of this tutorial series, and now put them in a new file with a link between them. If you use the include command for your engravings, you'll find that creating parts for performers is incredibly easy. There's a few things to keep in mind when you're using this command. You must remember, using the include command is similar to how you'd use an application shortcut in your operating system, in that if you change the name or location of a file or variable involved with the include command, make sure to change it anywhere in other files that reference it also. Thought of another way is if you change anything in your definitions, it will automatically reflect when it comes time to engrave your score file. So it's always a good practice to make sure you set up your projects with the proper file names, variables, and locations from the very beginning. This way, it'll be easier than having to change the names down the road after your score has gotten larger and most likely more complicated. Let's switch over now to an example project that I've put together. This will introduce you to the basics of the include command, and then once we cover that, I'll show you how you can create parts for your performers from your full score, which also uses the include command as well. One last thing. For those of you who are coming to Lillipond from a graphical score editor like Finale or Sibelius, may be familiar with the process of extracting parts. Well, handling parts in Lillipond is much different than those programs. It's actually much easier, in my opinion. You don't extract parts. You create them from your full score. Don't think of it as an extraction. Think of it from the other way around. Think in terms of including, so building from smaller blocks, not extracting something from something bigger. Let's take a look at this command together. So this is our first file here. This is our definitions file. You'll notice I've got two instruments. I've got player one and player two, and some music for each. And I've also got a comment here just to remind myself that this is the instrument definitions file. Now, if we go to engrave this, as you would expect, nothing happens. This is just our 
definitions of our variables, our instruments. Now, we need to link these to a score file. So if I open up my full score file here, now we're looking at our score file. Notice the version statement is 2.18. So for this example, I've upgraded to the most recent stable version of the program. Now I've got my header information, I've got my score block, but the important command here is the include command. You'll notice that I have the include command set here to the definitions file. So that means that in the score file here, it's referencing this definitions file with player one and player two. That's why in the score block, you'll see that I have player one and player two. Now when I go to engrave this, look what happens. We have our score because when I ran this, it went to the included file, it got the definitions, and then it put them in the score block, and here's our score. If we go back to our definitions file, and say we want to change the name of this instrument, let's make this variable, um, let's call it test, instead of player one. So we'll save the file, and then head back over to the full score file. You'll notice that in the score block we have the original variable name still. Let's see what happens when we try to hit engrave. We get an error message because there is no variable called player1. So always be careful when you change names that you make sure that they're referenced correctly in both files. So if we put this back to player1, hit save, and now engrave the full score you'll notice that our score looks correct. If you'd like to create a part for your performer, it's very easy. Simply open a new file, make sure you put the include command to include your definitions, and then just put a score block with a new staff, and if you'd like to name the instrument, you can do that here, and just include the variable for the part you'd like to print. Hit engrave, and we have our part. There's one more part of the include command I'd like to mention. Now, I prefer to keep my definitions in one file and then link that to my score file. However, if you'd like, you can keep every instrument in its own definition file and then use the extension .ily to organize them so you can have one for oboe, trombone, violin, whatever. So if you prefer to have a lot of different ILY files instead of one definitions file, that's fine too. The command works the same way. It's just what you prefer for your organizational style. So that's pretty much the basics of the include command. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.